Hi everyone and welcome to Kayla's Mesh Mixer tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the Ravoni pattern, which is a really easy thing to do. So the first thing you want to do is have the object browser open, just in case you need to uh, change a different layer or select the layer again if you accidentally deselect it. Another thing you need to do is show the wireframe. After this is done, you're going to see all these little lines. The wireframe is the most important part to making a Ravoni pattern. So first thing you're going to do is select the shape. Use the E key or Control A or Command A on the Mac in order to select the entire model depending on how big your model is. You're going to go to Edit and Reduce because the less triangles the better. I usually go for 50 and then just do that twice so that way it 50 is the 50 instead of going to 100 which does way too much. So the less triangles the better but too little and the program won't work. So I'm just going to edit and reduce this twice. Now for making a Ravoni, the easiest way to do it is to clear your selection afterwards, click edit, and make pattern. So the first one that's going to pop up is this with the little circle guys here, which is the tiled tubes. You just change the pattern type to dual edges, which is the number one I always use. Um, the mesh plus dual any sometimes will crash the file, depending on how complicated the thing is. This is a much less complicated version which works out really well. So to make the whole show better, all you have to do is raise up the element spacing and lower the element dimensions. So the element spacing adds more space between the holes. The element dimensions makes it a little bit smaller, but as you can see, the more you ramp it up or drop it down, the more visible it is or how thin it is. Make sure when you're doing this, you have a little bit of thickness, so that way it'll actually hold up. So what it does, is from the wireframe, it is taking the triangles and only showing the parts that connect to each other and erasing all of the content. So you can actually put your hand inside the object and fully zoom in and see the inside, which is pretty neat within itself. When you're happy, just click the enter key on your computer and it will mesh it out for you. After this is done, which doesn't take too long, folks, just going to calculate all those darn little triangles for us. You're going to want to make the object solid because, yes, it is going to say it's going to print fine. It is going to say it's going to be all right, but you do have to. And always remember to make the object a solid once you've edited it in any way, so that way it will close up any holes that the project might have. No, even though you're going to be making it a solid, all the holes of the Ravoni will still be there. So now you see it like this. To get rid of this very horrific weird view, because now it's showing you all the triangles for the Vervoni, you just click show wireframe again or click the W key and it will disappear. And this is your new model. As you can see in the object browser, it does give you the pattern and then the original shape. So if you don't like the way the pattern came out, you can delete it and the original shape is still there for you to use. You can even take the original shape and shrink down and have it as an object within the object, which is a pretty neat way to go at it. Um, so once you're happy and done with it, just click on your object, click the Make Solid button, ramp up the solid accuracy and the mesh density just to give it a little bit more strength and stability. Click the update button because if you don't, it will not fix the changes and it'll just keep it as you see there and won't actually have the more accuracy and the mesh density. The fast and automatic use of the Make Solid is a pretty good depiction of how it's going to work. Going to the other types can cause a lot more issues and sometimes not make the prints stay the same way as you originally made it.
So as it's loading, collapsing, it's going to make another layer on top of that. Then you're going to have a solid version of the pattern, the regular version of the pattern, and the original spear object. What's cool about that is that if your make solid did not turn out the way you want, you always have the backup of the original pattern and can keep editing and redoing the software as you see fit. It's a nice little backup feature that is very, very, very good with the Mesh Mixer programs that not a lot of other files automatically add on. So as you can see, it's all done. You click accept. And voila. So I'm just waiting for my little accept to click there. The reason I say to make it a solid is so that the file is a little more stable. Because it's just better to be safe than sorry, especially if you're going to print. It does cost money, even if it's a failed print. So there you go. You've got your Vervoni. You've got your circle on the inside. You can even duplicate these patterns, attach them together, combine them with the Union tools, and they will be a solid print that will work in a 3D printer. Vervonis only work for printers that use no, and I mean absolutely no, support systems. So anyone that works with grain or the fine powder would be able to print this. A basic maker bought printer might not be able to give you the same results, and you'd have to rip out a lot of supports or possibly have a lot of breakage issues. So once you're happy with that, you would export the file, send it off to print, and there you go. Just make sure you would export this solid pattern and not the originals. Thank you so much for paying attention to this thing. And hopefully more videos to come. This is Kayla Prousers, a.k.a. Alaska Pro, signing off.